Hey guys, so in this video, we are going to be covering questions number 16 through 20 of the January 2023 Algebra 1 Math Regions. Go ahead and grab your notebook and a pencil so that you can take lots of great notes. I'll be showing you the algebraic approach for each of the problems, and where possible, I'll incorporate a calculator strategy as well. Let's get started. Question number 16 states, 32 teams are participating in a basketball tournament. Only the winning teams in each round advance to the next round as shown in the table below. We have number of rounds completed as our input value, and we have number of teams remaining as our output value. Which function type best models the relationship between the number of rounds completed and the number of teams remaining? Let's evaluate the behavior of the numbers here. Our X values seem to be increasing by one. So that's pretty standard, and it's going to help us to isolate the behavior of the Y values. Our Y values seem to be dividing by two because 32 divided by two is 16, 16 divided by two is eight, eight divided by two is four, and so on and so forth. If you recall, the function that has the behavior of multiplying or dividing by the same number every time is the exponential function. So that's going to be the correct answer here. Linear functions are going to require you to add or subtract the same number every time. Our correct answer is choice two. For number 17, it states, in a geometric sequence, the first term is four and the common ratio is negative three. The fifth term of this sequence is, so for those of you who feel that arithmetic and geometric sequences are confusing, I'd like to give you a shortcut. Anytime I see arithmetic sequences, I try to think of linear functions. And anytime I see geometric sequences, I try to think of exponential functions. I'd like to show you what this means so that you can apply it to your work. I'm gonna set up a table of values here and we are going to represent the numbers that would be contained within this geometric sequence. Let's consider X, the number of the term, and y, the actual number in the sequence. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. It says the first term is four. Anytime we have a geometric sequence, because it's similar to the exponential function, we are multiplying or dividing by the same exact number. So because the common ratio is negative three, we can go ahead and multiply four by negative three, and we'll get negative 12. Then we multiply negative 12 by negative three and we'll get 36. Then we'll multiply 36 by negative three and we'll have negative 108. Finally, we're gonna multiply negative 108 times negative three and we'll have positive 324. So our fifth term is going to be 324. Now we can use the calculator to get this answer as well. Let's take a look. The explicit formula for any geometric sequence is a sub n equals a sub one times r to the n minus one. An explicit function allows you to find any term within a sequence. So we have a sub five, which is the fifth term, equals a sub one, which is four, times the common ratio, which is negative three, to the n minus one. So since we want the fifth term, we're going to raise this to the fourth power. We know that negative three to the fourth power is actually positive 81. So a sub five equals four times 81. And this is basically 324. But you could have also just put this exact function right here into the calculator. We will have four, open parentheses, negative three, close parentheses to the fourth power. And our final answer should be 324. Let's see. And look at that. We do have that as the correct answer. So answer choice one is correct. Let's head over to question number 18. The amount of energy Q in joules needed to raise the temperature of M grams of a substance is given by the formula Q equals MC open parentheses, T sub F minus T sub I, close parentheses. 
where C is the specific heat capacity of the substance. If its initial temperature is T sub I, an equation to find its final temperature, T sub F is, so we are solving here for T sub F. We want to isolate T sub F. So we'll go ahead and isolate that variable. Let's start off by writing our equation. We have Q equals M times C times, open parentheses, T sub F minus T sub I. And our goal is to isolate T sub F. The first step would be to undo this multiplication bond. So let's divide both sides of this equation by MC. So we have Q divided by MC on both sides. And this M times C is going to cancel out. Now we have Q over MC equals T sub F minus T sub I. Because we're solving for T sub F, we're gonna leave that one alone, but we do wanna move this minus T sub I over by performing the inverse operation. So we add T sub I on both sides. So our final answer is T sub F equals Q over MC plus T sub I. The correct answer here is choice two. Number 19. When using the method of completing the square, which equation is equivalent to x squared minus 12x minus 10 equals zero? Let's solve. We have x squared minus 12x minus 10 equals zero. Our goal here is to solve this quadratic equation by completing the square. Step one is to add c on both sides. So we start off with x squared minus 12x equals 10. I usually like to leave space here because we're gonna to have to complete the square. So our goal here is to add b over two squared to both sides. We're adding b over two squared to both sides. So what's b? b is negative 12. We have negative 12 divided by two squared. Negative 12 divided by two is negative six squared, which is 36. So our goal is to add 36 to both sides. Now we're going to rewrite this left-hand side as a perfect square. So we'll have X minus six squared on the left and we'll have 46 on the right. The beautiful thing about question number 19 is they don't really want you to solve the entire problem. They just want you to get to the step of expressing the trinomial as a perfect square. So we can tell that the correct answer is choice four. Question number 20 states, which quadratic function has the smallest minimum value? So we're gonna compare the vertex for each of these quadratic functions. Let's take a look. Since answer choice one is going to require us to graph this function using the graphing calculator, I'll skip it for right now. Choice two has a table of values and we can tell that the vertex is going to be somewhere between two and three. Since we know that this quadratic is concave up because the values start up and then go down and it goes right back up again, we know that the vertex is gonna be perfectly in between two and three, which is 2.5 comma, some number beneath zero. So let's estimate negative 0 0.5. For answer choice three, this is vertex form. So we typically take the opposite of this number and we take the same as this number to get the vertex. So our vertex is two comma negative two, which means the minimum value is negative two. So, so far, if we had to figure out the smallest minimum between negative 0 0.5 and negative two, answer choice three is winning. For answer choice four, the vertex or minimum is at zero. So if we had to compare answer choices two, three, and four, the smallest minimum value between negative 0 0.5, negative two, and zero is going to be negative two. So, so far we know that it's not answer choice two and it is not answer choice four. We just need to rule out answer choice one. 
Let's take a look at the graphing calculator. Let's graph answer choice one. We have six x squared plus five x minus two. And I'd like to see what the vertex looks like. It looks like the vertex is around negative three, but let's get the actual value. So we're gonna press second calc. So we're looking for the vertex, which is going to be the minimum. So let's press three on the calculator. And now they're saying left bound. So they want you to go to the left of the vertex, anywhere to the left, it doesn't really matter. And you'll press enter. And then they want us to go to the right of the vertex, anywhere to the right, and we're gonna press enter. And now we're going to calculate. So our vertex is negative 0 0.416 comma negative 3.04. So this function clearly has the smallest minimum value because negative three is smaller than negative two. So the correct answer is choice one. If you like this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Please make sure you reach out to me to let me know what other types of videos you'd like to see. And I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one.